Martin Luther King Day for me is just a day of reflection, right? So when we say we reflect, we just kind of reflect on the past and where we are as an organization. So when you talk about the Connecticut National Guard, you talk about the military as a whole. Um, you know, we reflect on the past. We've, we've actually progressed so far as, as just people. You know, you know, when he did the uh, speech, you know, have a dream speech on, uh, you know, August of 1963, you know, the world was so different back then. And then you look at it now and you say, wow, you know, some people say, okay, it hasn't changed, but, you know, I'm, I'm living proof that it has changed. Uh, Martin Luther King Day means to me is a, is a um, celebration of remembrance of where we were in the past and where we are in the future. I think about Dr. Martin Luther King, his quote as, um, you know, people being judged not by the color of the skin, but by the character. And, you know, one of the things tying it back to, you know, even recent events with George Floyd is how resilient, you know, all the airmen and actually all the guardsmen have been during this. You know, I look at, you know, myself as being the 103rd Maintenance Group First Sergeant and think about people coming from diverse backgrounds and how there was solidarity. You know, we had moments of silence. We also had discussions, you know, very hard discussions, which were discussing people's background, what you can do. You know, also, you know, thinking about it along the lines of, you know, what can you do better? I think his legacy is about civil service. So I think when we put the uniform on, you know, whether we're a firefighter, we're, you know, a police officer or a soldier, right? I think we put the uniform on because we want to make the world a better place. So when you go back to, again, that, that I have a dream speech in, uh, you know, in 1963, you talk about, you know, that civil service. You know, they were considered freedom fighters back then, um, but it was still about civil service, about human rights, and making sure that everybody had fair and equitable treatment, which is what we need to do, right? So that's what the police officers are there for, that's what law enforcement is, um, and that's what the military is. Like, you can't have an organization of this magnitude without actually having that civil service and understanding where we came from and where we are as, as of right now, which again is just what I would consider the progression of us as people. What I want uh, the airmen and the guardsmen to take away from Dr. Martin Luther King is, is unification and staying together, right? Making sure that we are all doing uh, something to help drive change and not um, have the status quo, right? So I think the, the one thing that everyone can do again is, um, you know, stay unified, you know, be, be allies to each other, help each other out when in need, uh, regardless of the color of one's skin or background but looking more at the content of their character. I think to build upon Dr. King's legacy, it, it goes with mentorship and guidance. Um, so just sharing your experiences with different folks, understanding where they've been um, and what we're doing as you get ahead. Again, the key word I keep using is progression. And as I look around the Connecticut Army National Guard uh, and the Air Guard as a whole, from the time that I came in uh, back in 1997, you know, fast forward to 2022, the progression is definitely there. It's been evident. Uh, I've watched people progress throughout the ranks um, and people share their stories and just mentoring others to say, hey, this is where you are. This is how you get there. Give me that roadmap, right? And again, it doesn't have to be, you know, black, white, you know, brown. It's just really about just human nature. When it comes to diversity and inclusion, you know, you got to have both, right? You need to have, you need to have diversity, you know, amongst the ranks and you also need to make sure that everyone's included and it's a very inclusive environment because one thing that I've seen is that when you have um, diversity, you have diversity of thought, you also, can, you also can actually perform better because you're having those different lenses and you're not necessarily having everyone from the same background, um, you know, from the same gender, from the same color, that are actually thinking alike. I've learned from so many different people. And again, somebody's actually pulling me and saying, hey, you know, Major Bryce, this is what you can do, right? Whether it's constructive criticism or not, it's part of Dr. King's legacy because he wanted to see everybody look at each other as brother and sister, as a whole, right? Make everybody wholesome um, and indemnify folks to say, hey, this is how we're gonna make things right. This is what we're gonna do as an organization. I think the Connecticut National Guard speaks volume when you say, okay, where we are as of right now. If you look at a formation, you say, okay, you have the entire Connecticut National Guard both Army and Air kind of get together on the parade field at Camp Net, you're going to see a melting pot of folks, right? You can see black, white, Hispanic, doesn't really matter. You're going to see people coming to the Guard uh, from different countries, you know, looking to get citizenship, and they really love what they do. And that speaks volume about our organization and where, how far we've come.